Throughout NASCAR's history, there have been plenty of engineers, mechanics, and downright geniuses who have stretched NASCAR's rulebook. Guys like Smokey Eunuch and Junior Johnson, who are almost single-handedly responsible for the rulebook being as thick as it is now. For clarification, I wouldn't classify these men as cheaters. I would go with the word innovators. Were they trying to gain an advantage on their competitors? Yes, but isn't everyone? I'm sure if anyone could find a way to gain an advantage, they would. This leads us to what is known as working in the gray area. And personally, the epitome of working in the gray area is the 1997 Winston, where we would see the now infamous T-Rex take the track. While this video's climax is the Winston in 1997, a backstory needs to be given. Three people play a key part in the events leading up to the Winston. The first being Jeff Gordon. Coming off of his first championship in 1995 and a runner-up in 1996, Jeff Gordon would be in the middle of his three-year dominance of the Winston Cup Series. The second individual of this story is none other than Ray Evernham, a former modified racer turned crew chief. He worked with Alan Kowicki, but that would only last six weeks before Evernham would quit at Daytona. He would then move to Bill Davis Racing, where he would work with Jeff Gordon. He would move to Hendrick Motorsports with Gordon and would become the dominant team of the mid to late 90s. Now, for the third, final, and sometimes forgotten element of the story, Hendrick Motorsports' lead engineer at the time, Rex Stump, the namesake of the T-Rex. According to Ray Evernham, Rick Hendrick gathered all the crew chiefs at Hendrick Motorsports. He then pitched the idea for everyone to give input on a prototype race car. They would give their ideas to Rex Stump, and hopefully, the ultimate race car would be built. They went page by page per the rulebook, building it the proper way. At a test session, they pulled out T-Rex after Gordon made a run with his regular car. To the disappointment of many, T-Rex was three-tenths off the pace. But... Gordon said that something was there, so Ray went to work. Ray had the idea of putting a crazy setup in it, so he went to Rex and discussed his idea. For that time, it was virtually unheard of to put softer front springs, stiffer rear springs, a bigger sway bar, and raising the floor pan on the car. After making the changes, Jeff went out to make laps. Ray clicked his stopwatch, and it looked like it was a tenth faster. Ray immediately got pats on the back. Why? Well, Ray wasn't looking at the full time. It wasn't just a tenth faster, it was a full second and a tenth faster. The key as to why this car was so special and iconic was that everything was raised, so when the car landed in the middle of the corner, it created a negative pressure, gaining all possible aero benefits. If you're familiar with ground effects, you get the idea. On the night of the Winston, Gordon started 19th after sliding through his pit box during qualifying. With 17 to go in the first segment, Jeff was charging to the front. And well, I'll let Buddy Baker tell you. You are riding with the rocket ship right now. Jeff Gordon has taken fourth place now. He is really getting around here. Gordon would finish third in the first 30 lap segment. After the field invert, he would restart 16th for the second 30 lap segment. Within nine laps, Gordon had made it up to seventh. In 12 laps, he had moved up to fifth. Gordon would finish the second segment in fourth, where he would restart for the final segment. The Labonte brothers would lock up the front row for the final segment. After a spin off the nose of Mark Martin's car in the first segment, Bobby Labonte won the second segment, with Terry finishing second. The second row would be Ricky Craven on the inside in third, an impressive showing in his first Winston. On the outside in fourth would be Jeff Gordon. The final segment would be a 10-lap sprint to the finish. No give, all take. Heading into turn three, Gordon muscled around the outside of Craven and Bobby Labonte. Now, only Texas Terry was in front. On the second lap of the final segment, Gordon was at his bumper coming off of turn two. Jeff ducked low and momentarily grabbed the lead, but lost to heading into turn three. He then passed Terry with ease off of four and never looked back. Bobby passed his brother coming to four to go, 
hoping to take the fight to Gordon and T-Rex, but it wouldn't be enough. Gordon ran off and left the Labonte brothers, and would take the checkered flag and $207,500. With the success of T-Rex, Stump wonders if it would have been better had nobody said anything about the car being different. But honestly, I don't blame him for taking pride in their work. It's a wonderful piece of engineering. Unfortunately, that would be the downfall of T-Rex. NASCAR and fellow teams had them on the radar. So much attention was drawn to the car. People would look under it whenever they would take the wheels off of it. Rick Hendrick would go on to say, quote, I had a feeling, and when the race was over, I kind of knew there would be some moaning. Well, he was right. The other car owners were not happy, stating, quote, We'll have to build all new cars. And, as Ray Everham said, it's easier to kill Frankenstein than it is to figure out how to get along with him. Now, as I'm saying this, you're probably thinking, if T-Rex had this much of an advantage, why did they let it race? Furthermore, why did Gordon's victory stand, then NASCAR ordered them to not bring it back? Well, every detail had been adjusted, but none of it was illegal. So they let them race, then they got to work on the rulebook. As victory lane photos were taking place, Ray Everham got word that Mr. France wanted to see him. As the story goes, Bill France Jr. told Everham, You need to pick up that phone right there, call your boss, and tell him that car is illegal. Ray, in shock, pleaded, What? <laughs> no, it passed inspection. No, sir. We built that car by the rules. It's 100% legal by the rule book." Mr. France took a drag off his cigarette and simply stated, it won't be tomorrow. Rex Stump said that they had asked them to simply tell them what was wrong with it. That was probably their biggest mistake, because they then spent their time checking every detail of the car. According to Rex, NASCAR added at least a half a dozen rules to specifically address T-Rex. Many stories say that T-Rex was turned into a show car after that. In reality, it was used again in the 1997 Brickyard 400, where Gordon finished fourth. In its original form, it was undefeated, but after they made the changes to comply with the new rules, it got beat. Gary Nelson, who was the head official at the time, does see value in the car, stating a quote from Oliver Wendell Holmes reading, The mind, once expanded to the dimensions of larger ideas, never returns to its original size. Today, T-Rex sits on display at the Hendrick Motorsports Museum, a reminder of an engineering marvel way ahead of its time. And that pretty much covers the story of T-Rex. I hope you all have enjoyed. Leave a like and let me know what you think. I'm hoping to do more videos like this in the future, so subscribe so you don't miss out. And with that, I'll end it here. I'm Jesse King, and I'll see you all around.